welcome back to my channel tales and tomes with amy if you're new welcome don't forget to hit the subscribe button so today i'm going to do my january wrap up for 2021 and i'm not gonna lie this deviated a great deal from my january tbr and the reason for that is because this month i actually subscribed to libby that sort of digital library resource and before then i had only been using like hoopla because that's what my mom recommended to me and i don't know you can't really compare the two because in a way i like hoopla better in a sense that you don't have to wait um for for books the way you do like in a more library-esque resource and libby you do but the trade-off is is that libby will ha give me access to books and audiobooks that i could not get on hoopla so in, in actuality it's good to have both so that really changed what i read this month so first off all those books that I had from checked out from the library that were like left over from my December TBR. Um, it was Black Rabbit Hall, A Curse So Dark and Lonely, and can't remember Gilded Wolves. Yeah, uh, yeah, though, no, yeah, they I didn't end up reading them. I tried reading Gilded Wolves. I was surprised it did not grab my attention. I tried the book. I tried the audio book. But no, like, and I'm surprised at myself because I know it's a much beloved um, series on booktube and the description, the premise seemed right up my alley, but I just didn't like it. And then same again for Curse So Dark and Lonely. I think I couldn't get into another Beauty and the Beast retailing so soon after I read Court of Thorns and Roses. So maybe I can try Curse So Dark and Lonely later. And then Black Rabbit Hall. Um, again, I'd been reading so many haunted houses and I, would, I need something really spectacular draw my attention and just didn't and it's also the nature again of just checking out library books the way you know in the public library you are you only have like a two or three week period to read those books and that's very um restricting to me which is why in many ways i prefer to use my university library because with the university library they let you check them out for a good like five months like the whole academic semester because they probably realize a lot of students are checking books out for the sake of research within a given um, course. But anyway, let's get into what I did actually read this month. So the first one I read was The Swan Thieves by Elizabeth Kostova. And it's funny how I acquired this book because this book was sort of the revelation of realizing just how valuable my goodwill was as a resource to get books. Because, you know, I already knew Elizabeth Kostova because her um, her debut novel, The Historian, is one of my favorite books of all time. And so I wanted more of her books. And so I actually found this used for like five or six dollars, you know, through Amazon third party. And so I ordered it. And then as I ordered it, and then before it showed up, I found this book at Goodwill. Again, for just a, as a hard cover was only two forty nine. And even when the Swan Thieves edition from the place that I ordered did come. I didn't open the package, but I could just realize that even though it was hardcover, it was a much smaller book. So I just like returned it and I'm like, I don't want it. And so yeah, this one was definitely an eye opener for how valuable Goodwill could be. So um, the Swan Thieves, it's not as like sort of gothic that way the historian was, but I really enjoy it because it's about this um, like therapist, some um, psychiatrist who he has this one patient who is an artist and he's been committed because he tried to like rip up a painting in a museum. And so there's this whole deal of why did he want to destroy this specific painting? Like what significance did it have for him? But the thing with this patient is he's not talking. Like he's not talking to anyone at all. And so basically our psychiatrist has to play detective talking to his ex-wife, talking to a whole bunch of people from his past to try and figure out what exactly is going on. And I really liked it. Again, I liked the um, exploration into French Impressionism and all of those good things. Again, was it as good as the historian? Again, I don't think it's fair to judge them because again, they are very different, but I really, really enjoyed this. The next book I read this month was The Prince of Mist by Carlos Ruiz Safon. And this is actually one of his YA books. And ever since he passed away, I sort of committed to myself that I will read his entire collection. And The Prince of Mist is, again, a very um, riveting gothic tale about this kid who, his family, they're in Madrid, I think, but they end up moving out to the country because it's in the midst of World War II, just trying to have a quieter, a more settled life. And then that's all the haunted tales going on about, like, the lighthouse and, like, creepy stories. And then there's this, like, 
demonic clown that's possibly running around and yeah it gave me very it vibes because of because of the crazy clown but I really enjoyed it it's a great it's a great um, example of what he can do with the gothic tale and I recommend anyone to read it. The next book on the wrap-up list is House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig and I've been really wanting to um, read this for a long time I was really intrigued I knew it was like sort of gothic-y and dark and the fact that it was a reimagining of the 12 dancing princesses which I really liked that idea like as much as I like Court of Florence and Roses but again like I said I couldn't get into Curse So Dark and Lonely so Beauty and the Beast just has been done so many times that I really like when people venture out into more obscure fairy tales again 12 dancing princesses or whether it's puppets master's apprentice which is the reimagining of pinocchio mixed up with frankenstein so yeah house of salt and sorrows i really enjoyed it it was much darker than i was imagining for a ya novel which i really enjoyed and i felt like despite how many sisters there were i felt like they were like fleshed out appropriately for how relevant they were to the actual story which was a little bit surprising and then I really liked the um, depiction of the stepmother where you have the main character naturally having feelings of jealousy or resentment because of the presence of the stepmother but also she can take a step back and realize that her stepmother hasn't really done anything yet like to honestly earn that score so I felt like it was a really beyond all the fantasy stuff and gothic stuff that I really liked I think it was a very nuanced good novel about blended families so I really enjoyed that as well next book that I read was of course The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins um, one of my brand new releases that I bought and I got it gave an extensive review on this I'll link it in the description box but yeah I really enjoyed it because as much as I enjoy like um, fairy tale retellings. I also enjoy retellings of maybe books of the 19th century or the 18th century. I think that is also some, you know, there are a lot of novels in that way that are worthy of retellings as well. And so I got, so I was very pleased with The Wife Upstairs. Next book on the list was Marina by Carlos Ruiz Safon. And Safon has gone on to say that this is one of his favorite novels. Again, it is a YA novel, technically, although personally, I don't see a great deal of difference between his YA novels and his adult novels but it's a really fun story about um, there's this kid and he's at a boarding school and and he ends up meeting this girl and her father and they kind of live in this um, dilapidated manner and there's also and then they realize that there's this crazy guy walking around who is making like really creepy puppets and it's like it's very hard to explain but definitely one of his you know better works I think and so yeah like read the combination of reading Prince of Mist and Marina prompted me to um, go see like where are his other works as well and I he has two other books YA books beyond Cemetery Forgotten Books which is The Midnight Palace and The Watchers of the Shadows well that's what it's called in English in its original title I think was The Light of September but anyway those two books I try I scoured Hoopla I scoured my library scoured my university library I scoured everywhere could not find those two books so I ended up breaking down and ordering them on Amazon I found them for like five bucks again via third parties and used then one of the classics I read this month was The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte and I was compelled to read this because I just really started thinking that I know there's another Bronte sister so why isn't her work as well known as Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights and so I read it and I really really liked it I felt like I don't feel like it was direct you know you could make the commentary that she was directly like bashing certain themes of Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights like talking about how how you know kind of giving commentary on how this brooding, mysterious, not very nice um, bad boy that um, that is portrayed in both Rochester and Heathcliff that that is a healthy thing and it's imagining and happily ever after with such a person is not very realistic. So Anne Bronte goes in the opposite direction where it's about a woman who is living in Wildfell Hall by herself because she has basically fled her abusive ex-husband and just so all of that. And so I really, really liked it and I'm thinking, how did not this not get as popular as the other two? And I was reading and so apparently 
Charlotte Bronte, who had a little bit of sibling rivalry with Anne, basically she prevented Anne Bronte's work from being published with another one of the sisters' works, I think after she died, and that the implications of that can still be felt today where Anne Bronte isn't as well known, which I think is such a pity because The Tenant of Fell Hall is really fantastic. The next book on the list is The Silent Patient by Alex Michael Leidis. And this almost is exactly like the Swan Thieves, where it's a psychiatrist who gets this patient who is an artist and she's not talking. And so he has to play detective. It's literally the same exact story, but with a very different ending. And I don't know which one came out first um, in terms of pure, like, substantial, like, literary merit. Of course, I think Swan Thieves was way, way better. But still, Silent Patient was a really excellent thriller, and I was not anticipating the twist that happened. And the next book I read was a lesser known work by Bram Stoker, The Lair of the White Worm. And this was actually his very last novel before he passed away, I think. And I finished it just to say that I finished it because I do have a Goodreads goal of 100 books this year, but I hated it. It was so racist, like with the African servant and oh my god, it was so disgusting and I was horrified and no amount of historical forgiveness could excuse the level of emphasis there was on racism and which races are better and especially because it wasn't even that relevant to the plot of like the secret you know white snake possibly lurking about so the fact that he put so much emphasis on it when in fact it wasn't even needed it's not like the African servant was the main antagonist and it was it was really cringy definitely the worst book I read this month and then I ended up reading Lock Every Door by Riley Sager and I was introduced to Riley Sager by reading his Home Before Dark which was his um, latest release last year and I love that book so much that I will be featuring it in season three of my Sublimely Gothic podcast so check that out but Lock Every Door is interesting because it shows um, this apartment sitter basically a girl down on her luck there's this really famous gothic sort of building in Manhattan called the Bartholomew and so they, they don't like the apartments to be unoccupied. So in between the really, really rich, fancy tenants, they get these apartment sitters to just keep an eye on things. And then, of course, creepy stuff starts happening. And it's like, what is really going on? And there is this weird trend that the protagonist finds out that of all the apartment sitters, they specifically choose people who have no family nearby or who are orphans. Basically, if something were to happen, would anyone care if they were gone? No. So that's a really creepy thing. And of course, she unlocks the whole mystery and it was a really good ride and I enjoyed it very much. And definitely the combination of reading that one and Home Before Dark, I am going to invest in reading his other two thrillers as well. And then after Lock Every Door, I read The Primrose Path by, again, Bram Stoker. Primrose Path was actually his very first novel and I really really enjoyed it. It's about a story of this um, man and wife where the man, um, they're in Dublin and they have a pretty okay life but he is very ambitious and wants to go to London. And so they do and then he, but then of course just the, you know, going from the country to the city where people are really nasty to each other makes me think of that um, quote from he who goes to the big city deserves what he gets. So it's talking about all of those um, socioeconomic, you know, transitions and social commentary on that. But it's also about in response to all these stressors and hardships, the husband ends up um, turning to alcoholism and it's the wife struggles with that and it ends very tragically. But I think, again, no crazy supernatural elements to it like Dracula, but it was a really good commentary on both um, certain elements of society and the human condition. So I really enjoyed it. And then the last book I read was again by Bram Stoker, The Water's Moo, which is kind of an old Irish way of saying the water's mouth. And this is, this was a shorter one about this guy who is like a watchman, like with the lighthouse and he's trying to um, look out for smugglers but the problem is is that his fiance's father is also potentially a smuggler and so again being torn between familial duty and like his official professional duty and all those things so it was it was really good I enjoyed it and so yeah I'm committed to reading all of Bram Stoker's 
novels because I did purchase um, a collected works um, in ebook format for 99 cents. So, I'll, so throughout the year, I'll probably finish all of his novels as well, unless the ones that I really, really can't get into. So yeah, those are all the books that I read for January. And make sure to tune in very soon for my February 2021 TBR. Catch you guys later. Bye.